So where are we? So last week, um, we were working on this uh, the set here, which we've got our our tree done. We got our field done here. We got the brown side done here. And so, as I mentioned last time, the background part behind the trees will be probably painted in Krita. So this will be all digital, digitally painted in. Also the clouds. Um, I did have some clouds, like I said uh, last time, which I've made in clay, but I think they look kind of silly. Maybe not. I don't know. I think clay clouds won't be as nice as actually painting it in and maybe blurring it as well, like making it a little bit less uh, crisp so that the, the foreground pops out. So this week we need to make the bridge. And also, I think last week I mentioned that... Let's see... I'm just going to take a piece of clay. Oh, let's see. So I got a piece of orange clay here. All right. So this is going to resemble one of our characters. So I figure our characters would probably be about this big. Maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's see. So the idea, anyway, with this set is, so the mother character from the other side is hungry, so she has to get the food, and uh, the bridge is how she gets the food, right? So she crosses this, this little creek or river. So yeah, I think this is probably about the size that she would be, looking at it on the paper. So she'll come across, walk across here, you know, and put this down like this. She'll come in the set, come across, and this is where all the other characters will be around the tree. And they're just kind of like hanging out there. They're all eating their apples. They're all happy, and they allow her to eat some apples. So that's the, that's the premise of the whole thing. And so I was thinking the way that I drew this on here, this bridge is a little high. And I was thinking maybe I should have the bridge lower. So when she crosses, it would be like, you know, her her head height would be somewhere around here. I think if I put it up high like I've got it drawn here, the distance of or the illusion of distance would be foreshortened. So I think I'm gonna have this bridge kind of down here, where the highest part is about there. So uh, Jason says, Sculpting Challenge sounds good as long as you return to Animation Challenges. I certainly want to get back into Animation Challenges one day soon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it would just be, you know, maybe for this five weeks or so. I'm not really sure, like, when school ends for everybody uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. Probably, I'm thinking it probably ends, um, what, in about another month or two? So, but uh, it has been a long time because we used to have sculpting challenges like, you know, way back when I first started AnimateClay.com. They were always popular. And uh, just because of the fact that they're simple, you know, it doesn't take a lot of time to do. And they're fun, you know. And it's also actually, I mean, when you make a film, like what I'm doing, I mean, I'm, I'm constantly sculpting. And to... You know, improve on sculpting is important for stop motion animators as well. Let's see here now. Yeah, so I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, for a sculpting challenge, what would be a good topic? I'm thinking probably something like, um, you know, something completely different from what we've done before. We've done a lot of stuff. I mean, most of the time, you know, we've had like a holiday-based animation and puppet making challenge for, you know, for years. And right now there's no, there's no real, at least we're, you know, in America, there's no, uh, nothing like a, a Christmas, like in July or, or something like, I don't know what would be good, but there's no holidays going on. 
So uh, maybe something just unique, something different. So let me see here. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. So Ron is saying, I didn't see that. He says he animated clouds that were made from cauliflower. That's interesting. And it's for a... Uh, For, for specific departments. Okay. So for food services, that's kind of cool. Okay, so I've got some gray clay. For, for this, I'm using um, Sergeant Art. Oop, there we go. Um, so we sell this in our webpage. We started reselling this stuff. So we've got Puppet Putty as well as Sergeant Art. You know, I find Sergeant Art a really good clay for, for stop motion, for clay animation. It's uh, it's not really the same as Van Aken. I wouldn't say it's worse. I wouldn't say it's better. I would say it's, you know, unique to it, its own properties. But what's great about it is it doesn't dry out. It doesn't really tend to, the colors don't tend to bleed on your fingers so easily. Which is really nice. I mean, this is it's really hot in this room right now where I'm doing this, so you can see it's it's not super greasy, it's not super um, you know crumbly. It's it's really good. Uh, it's a good overall clay, and you know Van Aken is harder to find. I went to uh, to Michael's just what last week. No, I guess it was two weeks ago, but uh, they've all converted to uh, Craftsmart clay. They don't sell Van Aken clay anymore. At least the Michaels I went to. Uh, I don't know about Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby is like a, you know, it's a chain of, uh, let's see here. So they have a, a chain of stores, Hobby Lobbies, but um, I don't know if that, if it goes across the country or not. But uh, it is big. I mean, they've got pretty much anything you can imagine in that place. Everything from, you know, like airbrushes to fabrics to, you know, artistic, uh, you know, pens and papers. And they've got uh, like holiday things and floral things. And it's like a, like the Walmart of craft or hobby shops, you know, it's just, <laughs> It's uh, it's really well known here where we live. It's like uh, if you go in there, it's always got tons of people inside there. All right, so I think that's not very good. Good curve there. Maybe do this. Hey, wee beast, welcome back. Yeah, so yeah, Hobby Lobby is still around, evidently. It's, uh. Summertime challenge. Yeah, see, Jason, that's a good idea, but actually, if you think about it, right now, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> so that we, we would alienate our Southern Hemisphere animators and puppet makers. I'm pretty sure I've got a, at least a few viewers from down down there. <laughs> a few people in Australia. It's a weird thing to think, you know. It's like, oh, it's actually, it's not, it's not summer down there. Isn't that kind of weird to think that there's people, you know, wearing coats and stuff and <laughs> scarves and warm hats and everything? <laughs> I mean, it's 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 kind of a strange thing. It's like a different dimension of of time or something in the, on the same planet. All right, so I think that this will probably be pretty good. Let's see. Yeah, see, this is definitely going to be much smarter to do this uh, bridge this way than at that height for sure. 
because it looks like if that were a character, we are going to animate our characters on there like this, you know. Um, it looks like there is more distance here than if it was higher. Let me see, and if I put our character here at the base, so the base is there, and that's at the, the level of the feet of the puppets that will be along the bottom. This. Hmm. Reminds me. Let me see something here. So, I mean, it's kind of cool. I mean, there's not much left to do on the set here. But. Hmm. Yeah, so what I'll do, um, just to kind of let you guys know, so our, our puppets are really large, as you can tell. So I can't just, like, you know, plop one of these characters on the set. Um, in Moho and in, and in uh, Photoshop, I'm going to be photographing all this stuff probably in the next week or two. Um, and so all these will be shrunk down in Photoshop and overlaid on top of this. So... There won't be really any shadows that they cast on the clay below it. That's the only thing I'm kind of concerned about. I might end up adding some shadows in Photoshop. Because, like, for example, this character here, which is just a piece of clay. Uh, now, if this were a clay on glass, of course, the, you still wouldn't have shadows. But um, I might be able to do something with that, maybe in Photoshop. It had to be animated, though. It had to animate the shadows. That's the only thing. Hmm. Maybe what I could do, because in Moho, what I'll do when I photograph these is we'll have layers. I don't know if I can have transparent layers or not. So if I, for example, in Photoshop, add a, um, a shadow below the character that can follow it around, I can make that shadow transparent, but I don't know if I can transfer a transparent um, layer, because it's kind of hard to explain um, without showing you guys, but how it works is I'll have different layers, so the head of our character will, will be a layer, the body will be a layer, you know, the arms are a layer, the, the mouth might be a layer, and so forth, and so you overlay them, and then you can slide the layers around as a Photoshop document in this program. But I don't know if you can trans um, use like a, a transparency. If you can, I could actually have a, a bottom transparent layer. So in that case, the shadow could, could you know, follow the character around as a layer. And you can sort of see through it onto the set below it, which would be this. Anyway, I'm just kind of brainstorming right now. I'm just kind of wondering if I can do that or not, because that would be nice. That would be something you can't do with the clay on glass technique so easily. I mean, you can, but it's a lot of trouble to do that. Hmm. Yeah, I need to think about that. Maybe I can um, do some experiments. So that will that will be something I do pretty soon once I photograph everything. Yeah, it's going to be kind of cool, because... Hmm. Yeah, that Moho program really kind of gives me a lot of options to to do compared to with straight-ahead clay on glass. So let's see here. So... How's this look on my camera? It's not too bad. Um, let's see. So Weeby says use PNGs instead of JPEGs and use the alpha channels for the shadows. Not sure how to do that. 
I can probably convert the JPEGs because the, or the original photographs would be JPEGs. That's the thing with that, but with alphas, I'm not sure how to do that part. I mean, I know how to make a transparent layer. I can, I can do that, but if if it's a PNG, can I do that in layers? Well, no. Actually, it would have to be a Photoshop document, yeah, because that's what you're actually importing. So. Whatever it is that you're using in Photoshop isn't actually going to be technically a JPEG or a, a PNG or anything like that. It's going to have to be um, a PSD file. I mean, unless there's a way to do what you're saying uh, in Moho that I haven't learned, because I haven't used the program before. I mean, I've I've seen uh, tutorials and it seems pretty straightforward. Doesn't seem super difficult. Doesn't seem super difficult, but it's kind of um Yeah, I need to watch some more tutorials on YouTube. I'm not really sure. I might Google that after the show, you know, just to see, like, can you use transparencies? You know, I'm thinking you can, because there's this one guy who had a tutorial where he animated a, a simple candle, and he did it all two-dimensionally, so it was all, uh, you know, it's done. I don't know if he used Krita or Photoshop. It might have been Krita, actually, but he did a candle. And, um, and one of the layers was sort of like an airbrush layer, so it was... Um, it was used to go over the candle, the, the flame itself, and represent like a glow around the, the flame. And he animated the glow sort of moving. And you could see through it. You could see through it definitely. Uh, so I'm thinking there's a way. I mean, I'm going to look that tutorial up. Maybe I can find out. It's been a few months since I, I've looked at that. So um, let's see here. So. Well, yeah, I think Jason, uh, uh, okay, so I should backtrack. You guys are just talking a lot. So Ron says, I'm dealing with that now. Place an object into your shot to show the shadow, what it looks like on the small scale so that you can better match it later. That's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I could probably, you know, put something on there like this. And it has to be lit, of course. So most of my lighting is going to come from the top down. So that will cast some shadows for sure. Um, and so let's see here. So what? But the layer will be flattened. And yeah, I use Photoshop. I mean, I understand how to use Photoshop, and I understand how to make a PNG file. But when you're saying like using alpha channels and stuff, um, I mean, I know how to alter the channels, but I don't really know. How that would relate to Moho, you know, that's that's what I'm confused about. And Ron says, flatten the image and the background turns white, saying it as a PNG. Yeah, um, I understand that, but I mean, like, it's it's not like that. Yeah, it's it's not what I'm what I'm saying. Like, I'm not wanting to have a. a because see, if I do it that way, the shadow will be exactly the same silhouette as the character, right? But we're talking about something where the shadow kind of goes over these contours of all the clay underneath it. So let me see if I can show you guys. Yeah, so here's the shadow, right? Here you can see behind it what it looks like. It doesn't really look like the silhouette at all. It kind of, you know, tapers off. See how it kind of looks. Um, I mean, yeah, if I had the lighting exactly above it. All right, but I'm gonna have the lighting kind of like this. Let me see if I can emulate it. It's gonna be kind of a sharp angle. See, so 
it's more like a like an airbrushed let me get it more sharper here more sharp angle I mean it's gonna be subtle it's not gonna be super sharp it's not gonna be the same shape as the character it's gonna sort of you know look like it's airbrushed essentially anyways um, I don't know I just gotta experiment really got to experiment so let's finish this bridge up here. So what time is it? It's only 8.24. All right. So I'm thinking. Make it look like there's some little stones. It's like the arch. The St. Louis arch. On a very small scale. <laughs> there we go. Let's see. So for the middle block. I think I'm going to sculpt that on there. Sort of make it stick up a bit. Let's take this off of here. I don't really want to smash the, the clay, so... <laughs> Airbrushed? Yep. Uh, I hope people know what that means. I mean... <laughs> So a more faded, um, gradual darkening of the, the shadow, the closer you get and the, and the further you get from the object would be sort of airbrushed. Yeah, do people still use airbrushes very much? I mean, man, I used to use an airbrush all the time. Airbrushes are fun. All right, so here's our center block. Oops. So on bridges like this, I think the the way that they build them is they they always have a center block that's like the I don't know what they actually call it. I know there's a name for it. It's the most important block in the arch. It's like, uh, it's the one that all the, the pressure is put onto on the bridge. It's like a wedge, you know. It's... So I'm going to kind of give it some two dimension or more dimensionality here. So, as you can see, here's the the line work. Very simple. But I think I'm going to give it some texture. I'm going to sort of have these blocks wrap around the top as well because it, the camera may see that part even though it's going to be flat like this. It's got to look right. Just like that. So what sort of texture should I use? So is this kind of like a stone, I guess? So a 
stone-like texture. Across the bottom. Should be pretty cool. Oh, the keystone. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> it's like everybody knows what it is, but me. All right, so now we got our keystone. We've got our blocks kind of carved in here. And so let's see what that looks like. I don't want it to be like super detailed, you know. I'll move this in place, see what the whole thing looks like on the camera. Hmm, yeah, that's not too bad. thinking always thinking I'm thinking maybe I should sort of well let me see what the texture on here looks like first what it will look like when I add the texture I'm thinking I might want to add like one block that's this slightly different colored you know like maybe just to shake things up a bit give it some because it seems really flat to me you know we've got we've got our grass and it's all different colors we've got our grass up here that's all different colors and the tree also has a little variety in the shade of colors as well so let me see what color would look good with this though yeah. I mean I could add the variety with the texture so I might try that but where is my tool at where are my tools? Oh, there it is. I kind of test it out on the back. Like that, or like this. I think the finer texture would probably be good. Nope, I go with the bigger texture because it looks like the smaller texture just just from looking at it here it's not going to really be visible because it's too small in the shot so I'm going to use this tool as my texturizer <laughs> if I can use anything else though I've got some other things I could try, but I think I'll use this tool. This one seems to work pretty good. Let's see here what that looks like roughly. Yeah, see, it's not very sharp. This web camera is not sharp enough for me to really use as a good gauge of. It is in a general sense, but eh, that's okay. To my eye, this looks right, so I'm just going to keep using this tool. So these tools, there was a guy named uh, Wayne the Dane Hansen who was a sculptor in Sculpey. He was known as, uh, I mean, he was really pretty well known back in the, well, would have been the early 2000s and he used to 
you know, have all these video tapes that he created to show his sculpting techniques. And he was, you know, he was pretty good. He sculpted in, I guess, around like one six scale or so. And he would do like these little fantasy dioramas and sometimes he would do classic monsters like Frankenstein and the Wolfman and, you know, stuff like that. And he used to take a lot of time to really sculpt a lot of detail on his sculptures. And this is at a time when ZBrush and all that never existed. And so everybody pretty much sculpted in clay. Nobody did any kind of 3D printing and all that kind of stuff. So uh, these were tools that he used and he recommended. And I mean, I've got, I still got these for, these are you know, almost 15 years old or so. I've taken good care of them, so they haven't broken yet. <laughs> Didn't like, you know, drop it or, you know, lose it or sit on it or something. So um, I've used them quite a bit and they're, they're really super small. Like this one here is just like a super fine wire of sorts. It's kind of hard to see on the web camera, but really super detailed. And uh, that particular sculptor, he, his, I think his house burned down not, you know, too many years ago. Lost pretty much all his stuff, lost everything. And I've seen him on Facebook, so I know he's bounced back. But that had to be really, you know, a, a tragic experience for him. It's kind of weird to go on Facebook and, you know, all the bad stuff that happens in people's lives is kind of just out there. Whereas in the past, you know, people kept that stuff to themselves. Or at least if they mentioned it, it wasn't, you know, as visceral as on Facebook with things like photos and, you know, instant pictures of what happened. And I always kind of find it weird, though. Like, if I, if I had some sort of unusual thing that happened to my body, like my arm fell off or something, I wouldn't be posting it to Facebook. <laughs> But a lot of people do. They're like, you know, oh, I got this giant infection in my leg. Here's some pictures. And you're just like, okay, you know, if you told me, that would have been that would have been all I needed to know. But it's much more, like I say, much more visceral, visceral and um, visual and just. You know, that's but that's reality, right? All right, so I'm gonna use my. This is another tool that I use a lot for for texturing. It's just like a little ball tool on the end of a a stick. But it's a smaller one. It's probably quarter size of this other tool that I use here. So it's really good to have a variety of of tools like this. So if you can get, um, here's another one that's a size up. That's like you know maybe. You know, 10 times bigger than that one. So I'll use a variety of little ball tools like this for texturing. This one here I made myself with a, a, um, a ball, or it's a Delrin ball, which I, I heated up this tool and used a, a propane torch and just stuck it right in there. I, I drilled the hole in the ball first, but it kind of like melted in there. Um, and that melting it, you know, is what holds it onto the end. This was like a dental pick. So the other end, it used to look like this, sharp and pointy. And so I actually broke off the end of the pointy part of a dental pick for this one and sanded it and rounded it out and made it nice and smooth. And that's what I use a lot for, for hair and, you know, like the tree trunk, you know, things like that, little lines and stuff. And the roundness is great for wrinkles as well. If you do realistic sculpting. But anyway, uh, so yeah, always get a variety of tools. It's really smart to do that. The more options, the better. Um, yeah, the, the tools that you use the most are what you're gonna get good at using. Like you'll, it'll be intuitive to use them. Hey, psst, what are you doing? Hey. Cat. He's exploring my box of supplies I got from animation supplies today. 
my uh, one of my cats that we have is really smart. If he wants to go out of the room and the door is closed, he does something bad. That's like that's his thing. He'll uh, he'll jump up on stuff. He'll start scratching things. He'll knock stuff over. Anything he can to get your attention. So right now he's starting to get into stuff. He's like, let me just see what's in this box here. You can tell like the expression on his face is, uh, he's distressed. He's like, I want to leave. Do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> All right, Tony, I'll leave you out in a minute. Okay, so here's our bridge. Textured and... Show you guys up close. So there's the bridge, like this. I think that'll look pretty good. So I'm probably going to have to add some little, you know, grassy things around it, perhaps, or... All right, Tiny, I'm going to let you out. All right, excuse me, everybody, for just two seconds. Okay. So, um, ah. Wow, I often think I should take photos of my stuff just in case. Yeah, you know what? You should. Um, if you want to preserve your, your art, always take pictures. You know, back it up, save things. Definitely do that for sure. You don't want to lose your all your work. Let's see here. Kind of looking at this on my screen. Looking at the textures, I'm gonna add just a little bit more on the back. Anyways, um, so Ron says, I haven't been on Facebook for a month. Internet is transforming. And Ron says, it's a burnishing tool. Do they call that a burnisher? Really? Well, this one, is it really a burnishing tool? Because, uh, hmm. Maybe it is. I've seen burnishing tools, but and they look kind of like this, but they're usually sharp. And you use it to sort of uh, cut out, like if you cut a piece of tubing or something, you know? And you leave, uh, for example, like if there's a, an edge that's kind of folded over on the inside when you cut it with the hacksaw, you usually you use like a burnishing tool to kind of scrape it out. That's what I always thought a burnishing tool was, but maybe I'm wrong. I have so many tools, I mean, seems like a loop tool. This is, I use this one, one a lot for, um, when I make a clay puppet and scrape their mouth out. This one here, because it's kind of got that little curve to it, you can get into the parts under the lips, you know. So there's certain tools like this that, like I might not use it a lot for general sculpting, but for very specific things, this tool is really good. <laughs> So like I said, I've had these for, you know, like 20 years and uh, I don't know, like I've gone into hobby shops and I'll always look at the tools. I'll always be like, do I need that sculpting tool? You know, if I see something different and most of the time, you know, I've, I've already got the tool. I, I've owned it or I've, you know, bought one and modified it or, you know. 
Oh, deburring. That's oh okay. Gotcha, weebies. Gotcha. Deburring and burnishing. Two different functions. So, so then answer this question: What exactly does it mean to burnish? Ah, okay, for denting. See, that's something Lionel or Ivan Orozco from Stop Mo Works would probably know because he's probably needed to do that for his metalworking purposes. Alright, so now let me see here. Hmm. I also need to add rocks to this as well. I don't want to make it the same color. I want to make them probably lighter. So, get some white. So I'm going to add some white with this, uh, with this gray. These will be the stones that are inside here. And I'm not going to be sculpting the water. I'm thinking for the water, I'm going to use Krita as a, a way to do that. Yeah, see, I've never had to burnish anything before. So, I mean, making a dent in something, you know, I've never, I mean, I guess technically I've burnished my clay here because I've used the ball to press into the clay, you know, but, um, but for like a mechanical reason or something like in metal working, I've never had to do that. And I've taken shop class. I've taken metals class in high school. Um, I know in the jewelry store that I worked at, they had a, they had stuff similar to that, but it was you know not really for the same purpose. Oops. Let's see. Hmm. Should I go lighter or darker? I don't know. Or maybe the same? Ah, okay. So like a copper plate. I gotcha. So you're talking about like a sculpting process? Sort of, um, sort of like... Uh, a relief sculpture is that what that is because I've seen people do that but I've never known that the tools that they use were called burnishers <laughs> alright so this here I, I've added too much white clay to my gray so I'm going to add a little bit more gray should I add gray or should I add green I think I might do that. I think I'm gonna add some of this dark green to this. Actually, it's not really dark, is it? Where's my dark green? Oh, you know what? Speaking of, speaking of, let's see here. Okay, three different colors. Ah, okay, so that's how you, what you're talking about, Ron. Very cool. Um, so speaking of metalworking, um, Tom Briarton just released, he released a video on how to make ball and socket armatures, how to machine them and stuff. So that's something that I think if you guys are interested in, um, if you're friends with Tom Briarton on Facebook, he I think he has a link on there on where to buy it. And I have yet to buy it, but I'm going to definitely buy, uh, buy that soon. And I also talked to him and he said uh, that you know, he would he would be willing to uh, sell it in our online store. You know, I'm not sure if people are wanting to do, you know, to buy it from our store or not, but I try to, you know, help out animators and and stuff by offering their products through the site. So uh, it's something that you know I might negotiate with him on how to do that. I'm not sure I'm going to do that yet because it's a digital download, and uh... 
You think so, Wee Beast? Yeah. Hey, Dylan. Welcome. So, see, I'm thinking, because I've, I've gone hiking, I've seen a lot of rocks and water. They always sort of have a uh, a tinge of green in them, because usually the the mold and stuff like that and algae builds up on rocks. So I'm going to kind of... I think the green is a good way to go. I added some brown to the gray, like a, a brownish color. darken it and then the green to sort of give it that algae look there we go I think this will be pretty good like that just trying to think about if the scale is good in me you know what yeah so closer I would have larger rocks and then towards the back smaller I gotta keep the uh, force perspective in mind when I do this so I'm gonna probably Maybe just one more rock, one more stone in there. Um, so Jason says, I did work in a jewelry store too. I love sculpting in the blue wax, knowing it was going to be cast in a precious metal. I should do it again. Yep. Yeah, I used to do that as well. We used to, they called it the lost uh, wax casting process. You used to do that also. That was a, a real lot of fun. Um, and scary <laughs> I don't know what you guys did for injecting the the gold into your molds but we used to have this thing that used to, uh, centrifugal force it was like a like a uh, a spring loaded table that you winded up and then you put a little pin into this little uh, arm which holds it in place holds the tension and then you would have your crucible and everything set up and you would melt your your molten gold or platinum or you know whatever you were doing and uh <laughs> so you could release the pin and the thing would spin around really fast and shoot the gold into the mold you know where you've melted out your wax and you know once every once in a while we would have a mold that would explode because you get like an air bubble in there and you know the gold would just like shoot out everywhere and I never did that part I always had one of my co-workers do that Phil <laughs> he was an expert at doing it anyway he did it for like you know 25 years and yeah that was sort of like the do or die moment because you work on your wax for however many hours and put all that work into it and if you mess that part up you know it's just you've wasted a lot of your effort all right so with these I'm gonna texture these these rocks I don't want them to be smooth or too smooth it's gonna be kind of textured maybe a little bit of facet like a faceted look You know, working in ZBrush kind of gives you a lot of, I mean, it's kind of interesting. I've worked in virtual reality. I've worked in ZBrush for sculpting, you know. And sometimes you learn stuff in, in digital that you can transfer to clay. And there are certain brushes in, uh, in ZBrush that I kind of like. There's this one guy, he was a an artist for Blizzard, Blizzard Entertainment, which makes video games and stuff. And, uh... <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true, Jason. Yeah, have your, have your, uh, your wed clay sculpture explode because it has an air bubble. <laughs> but, uh, but digital stuff, you know, if, if you guys work in digital, Sometimes you can transfer what you've learned there to clay, and, and vice versa. Um, if you guys ever get into, uh, if you ever try to um, understand 
uh, how to sculpt in virtual reality. There's a, there's a, about three programs, I think, for sculpting. There's Oculus Medium, which I use. And then I saw another one that came out, which is similar to it. Like, I, I think the technology behind virtual reality is it's universal right now with what you can do. So when people create sculpting programs, they're all kind of generically the same. So whoever comes out with the, like the, the first sculpting program, you know, is the most popular. But they're all pretty, pretty close to the same functionality. Um, as Oculus Medium, which I think Oculus Medium was the first one that came out, but. All right, so anyways, I think this is pretty good. I got, we got our rocks, we've got our bridge. Um, see, I wanna add grass and stuff around here and just a little bit along the bottom of the bridge, but the fact that it's sticking up and it's above everything else, I wonder if I can do that and make it look decent. I don't really know. So I've got our compilation of green clay here, which we've used from making the base. So let's see, I think, which color? Hmm, maybe this color. This one's kind of in between. Oops. All right. Yep, about five more minutes left. Which is perfect. So it probably seems weird that it took an hour to make just, you know, these three little things, but... But it's completed. So let me add a little bit of grass, maybe like this. Let me see. Oh, come on. Yeah, clay eyebrows and clay little strands like this, which are, you know, supposed to be grass. Pretty close to the most annoying aspects of working with clay because they never go where you want them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to add grass to the base of this bridge. I'm going to leave it the way it is because I don't think it's going to look right. Just looking at it on my web camera doesn't look look the way I like it to look. Doesn't look the way I'd like it to look. Yeah. See here. This too got to fix. That's good. Okay, and this also. Let's make sure that's nice and crisp. Yeah, sometimes, you know, when you work with clay, you have to handle it, and so you end up removing details with your fingers because you handle the clay. So since I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm going to just kind of make it permanent. Where's my other tool at? Make sure this is also well-defined. That's good like that. All right. So our little mock character here. Get rid of this stuff. Show you guys what it looks like again up close. So our little orange mock character is just for scale and just to know what it would look like, you know, as she's walking over this bridge. And 
the top of this so the the water itself will start at the top and kind of come across here behind her so you'll see the water start there and I'm gonna probably animate the water in um, in probably Krita maybe make a cycle or something I'm thinking the one thing that I might need to do still one thing I might need to do is right here I think I'm gonna add some clay where this void is because when the water is here it's gonna have this void and it, I can't make it go across there so maybe just a little bit of clay right there not much, but that's going to bug me if I don't fix it. So I've got lots of clay, which is the same color as the, the rest over here. So I'm just going to take a piece. Let me see here. This color is better. Hey, Randy. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just going fi to finish up this little detail back here. And uh, so, what we did is we, uh, so we made this bridge, we had the little stones, and behind it, I will be animating the water probably with uh, Krita, as I've mentioned. <laughs> Ron says, takes me much longer to make three little things on my projects. Yeah, you know, that's it's crazy, isn't it? Like you think, oh, it's going to be, you know, a simple thing to do. It'll take me five minutes. No. Five hours later. <laughs> All right, so I'm just adding some little grass texture here. And by the way, uh, Jason, I think you said that you called this a number 12 tool, I think, or something like that. This is a 007 wax spatula. So if you want to remember, uh, if you want to find this online, if you want to remember how to find this, think about like James Bond is 007. So that's what this is, an 007 wax spatula. But this is my one of my favorite tools that I use for all my sculptures. There we go. So the reason I wanted to add this little piece of clay here is just because I think if the background is not defined here very well. Hmm. Yeah, see, it sticks out, though, doesn't it? Ah, I'm going to change the color. Nope. See, this is why it takes three hours to do stuff. <laughs> Got to make that a lighter color. At least it's a simple thing to make. But uh, I'm just trying to think of the water behind here. You know, it's going to have, there's a sharp, nice, clean edge kind of coming back here, comes down. And that makes sense because uh, it's farther away, you know, so the things are a little bit more crisp and straight and defined. See, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's put this back here. See, now I've got green clay on my fingers still, so it's changing the color. Let me throw that away. I'm gonna have to wash my fingers a bit. Totally worked it though. Yeah, no problem, Dylan. I mean, uh, Jason. Um, Dylan says, very nice. I haven't tried to downshoot yet.
Alright, so using alcohol, just cleaning my fingers off. Because I can't seem to get a clean... Sculpt here, let me see. Where's my clay again? Here it is. Okay. There. Now as I sculpt it in my fingers, it will not change colors. So, you know, that's one thing about, like I said before, I, I mentioned that this Sergeant Art clay does not, not really bleed on your fingers the same way Van Aken does. I really like this clay. I mean, actually, this is, well, this is the second time I've used this particular clay for stop motion purposes. I did use it on Zombie Pirate Tales as well. And it works pretty good on that also. I can't really, I have nothing bad to say about it. In fact, um, I'm not really happy with Van Aken so much anymore. I mean, their their formulas definitely changed. A lot of uh, my animator friends have noticed as well that it's not so great. That in the past it was much, much nicer to use. Okay, that's better. Okay. <laughs> that there okay <clears throat> now we're good I just add a little bit of texture on here as well super fine texture on these rocks All right, there we are. So that's what that will look like. So that character will go over the bridge. And then I can walk over here. So one thing also I noticed is that the, the bridge, if I photograph it like this, if, if I photograph it here, it lines up with the water fine. If I photograph it off center, it looks like the bridge is floating over the, the water. So I am probably going to photograph it in the center. So I'm going to kind of scoot it over just a tad bit here. Yeah. I might even, um, I might even press this clay a little bit flatter here. that texture back in there. That'll be pretty good, I think. It's kind of looking, I'm just kind of looking over the whole thing because Technically, this is going to be done now, and I'm just trying to think the whole, you know, the shot through. Is there anything I should add or remove, or are the textures enough? And uh, let's kind of define this a little bit better here because it's not. Super sharp there. It's not too bad. Here I can add a few more little lines and the very back. Very back. Let's see where's my other tool at. It's this one. Use some finer textures. So force perspective wise, the further back you go, the smaller the details. I don't know, does that look good like that? Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, 
this one, this little chunk of grass here kind of sticks out though. So I might just change this. It's a little bit too dark. I want variety in here, but I don't want it to really stand out because the tree is the central focus. So I'm going to change that. And then maybe I'll add this green instead. Different green to have variety, but not, not going to be something that pops out too much. I could even make this one sort of round, maybe. Like that's a bush or a tree, uh, not a tree, a uh, plant or something. Add some texture to it. There we go. That's actually a bit better. I think that's nice that way. Um, Ron says, uh, I've been down shooting for the past month. Easy peasy. Yeah, it's actually really fun. And it's, it's not the same as trying to have rigs and armatures to hold your characters up and all that. It's, it's really much simpler. <laughs> I mean, it's actually a great thing, I think, for for newcomers to stop motion to to get into is to is to try it out and you know it's a uh, it's a good beginner sort of stop motion technique. Same with uh, paper cutouts. You know, that's something I think a lot of elementary schools or uh, you know schools where teachers are into stop motion they'll usually use techniques like that or they'll have like a sand table they'll have a table with like four sides that hold the the sand in place and then you can animate the sand and stuff like that you know sort of simple but doesn't mean it's bad because it's simple or anything in fact uh it's really time consuming to do it other ways so you can get more done and be more productive if you if you do it this way so Dylan says it's hard to get clay in Bali. They just have super bad plasticine. I found sculpting tools, but no clay. Huh. In that case, you know, there, you can make your own plasticine. There are some places on the internet that explain how to do it. Um, I mean, it's not super hard to do, but finding the ingredients is, is that's the hard part. All right. Well, anyways, um, I've looked this over. I think it looks pretty good. So like I said, I did just change this little this little spot here to a lighter piece of clay. The, let me see. Where's the other piece that I had? Uh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone in my giant box of confusing stuff. But uh, so here's the general way it looks. We have our tree and... This will be where all the characters will be standing around here. We've got our apples, which, you know, technically to scale, these apples are gigantic in the tree. I wonder if I should keep, well, I'm going to keep them that way, I think. Um, yeah, I think I'll keep them that way. So we've got our bridge. Try to see here. So, hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not gonna really ruminate over this for too long because uh, I know I'll find problems. But um, hmm. Let me see here. Yeah, it should be okay. All right, well, I'm not going to really worry about it. <laughs> I guess uh, next week, what we'll do, let me see here. What will, I, what will we do next week? The characters are sculpted. This set is done. This set is done. And there's definitely things we can do. 
Um, I know I need to sculpt certain props and things like that. And we also had to have a close-up of this area of the set that we had to make. Now, I don't know if what I'll do is zoom in. You know, use Photoshop and zoom in on this area or like, you know, photograph it up close so everything isn't tight. Or if I'll, re if I'll sculpt it. So I might end up photographing everything and then sort of in Photoshop putting it together and seeing what it looks like. Because if I do, um, zoom in on this area where the action takes place in all the shots the details may look unusual you know if I zoom in on this part here just like this it might look unusual because you'll see the fingerprints and everything will be gigantic and then we'll have the characters in front of it um, I'll have to play it by ear I'm not really sure but we might end up you know sculpting uh, another set up close. Uh, the other thing we might end up doing is like making a couple of trees and things for another set as an overlay because we had to have the uh, illusion of distance because one uh, one character, the mother, when she comes across, uh, she's going to be on this side of the set and she's going to look across this direction and she needs to see the tree and everything. So. I don't really need to have another angle, do I? No, I don't. I can just show the, the camera pan across over here. Okay. Yeah, so next week, I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have to think about it um, over the week and figure that out. Also, uh, before we go, uh, I will work out what our next challenge will be. It'll be a sculpting challenge, probably Either sculpting or a puppet making challenge, and you know you guys will know about it in the uh, on the site animateclay.com. And I guess that's it. So anyway, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you all next time. See you later. And yes, uh, storyboards I do have to work on. That's a good point, Jason, because I I'm not really sure about. Uh, what we're going to do. So <laughs> definitely. We'll talk about that next week. See you guys later.